Speaker, I'd like to introduce Mr. John Williams, Senior Deputy Director of the Administrative Office of the Courts. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm really <laughs> pleased to be with you um, with the North Carolina Association of Property and Evidence uh, because I feel like I was part of the uh, creation of this in a small way. Uh, several years ago, I met uh, Neil Woodcock at the uh, Department of Crime Control and Public Safety, where I worked for 10 years, uh, alongside Neil, and he was working on the state uh, evidence warehouse. And we talked about evidence a lot. We talked about how different uh, states are approaching it, and the fact that out west, several states had property and evidence associations, and there was a national association. And that for some reason, it really hadn't taken root on the east coast yet, it was kind of a West Coast phenomenon, um, and maybe like methamphetamines, it decided to come east. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, sorry, Neil, I couldn't resist that. But uh, uh, Neil talked a lot about that, and we talked a lot about the uh, the wisdom and the value for North Carolina with so many different law enforcement agencies uh, of creating a, a role for an association of increasing professionalization, the community of ideas, the standards of practice. Uh, to elevate uh, this part of law enforcement uh, to the stature that it really demands uh, in today's world. Evidence has become more complicated, the preservation of evidence, uh, DNA, you know, everything else. Uh, I know you've been hearing from the uh, Innocence Commission uh, on some of these issues as well. Uh, it's a tremendous thing that this association has taken root in North Carolina uh, to improve uh, our efforts and our consistency across the board. And I thank you all for coming out today. Um, and I recognize the familiar faces. Hank Bristol, how are you? Many years working together on the uh, Crime Commission. Um, today I'd like to talk a little bit about technology. It's really kind of a jumping off point uh, to talk about some, some future issues in criminal justice. Uh, so we'll talk about the discovery automation system in, in the courts. But it's really to uh, have a bit of a dialogue about technology in the future criminal justice system. Can I find out real quickly who we've got represented in terms of agencies? Maybe starting on my left. High Point PD. High Point? Durham PD. Durham. 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 All Police Department. Maybe Durham Sheriff's. Okay. Waynesville PD. Waynesville. Morrisville PD. Morrisville. Statesville. 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 Good county sheriff. Good county sheriff. Where's that? Foxfire. <laughs> 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 oh, where's Foxfire? I'll tell you. <laughs> it's in Moore County. In Moore County. Great. <laughs> Fracking. <Ashford>. Next. Ashford. <laughs> Ashford. 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 Wake County Sheriff. Wake County. Great. Wake Forest PD. Wake Forest. CCBI Wake County. CCBI. Great. Uh, we, one reason I'm repeating all this is I've been warned that it's all being videotaped. So, <laughs> you know, for posterity, people will actually know where you're from because otherwise it's just me staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you say where you're from? Oh, Wake Forest PD. <laughs> Wake Forest also. State Crime Lab. State Crime Lab. Great. New Hanover Sheriff's Office. New Hanover Trip. State Crime Lab. Yeah. Crime Lab. Crime Lab. Crime Lab. <laughs> Greenville PD. Greenville PD. Dunn PD. Dunn. Garner Police. Great. Garner. More Garner, yes. Innocence Commission. Innocence Commission. Innocence Innocent Commission. Commission. Riceville Beach. Riceville Beach, great. Rockingham County Sheriff's Office. Great. Elizabeth City PD. Rockingham County, Elizabeth City. Durham PD. Durham. Graham. Graham. Rocky Mountain. And Rocky Mountain. <laughs> uh, so we got East, West, Piedmont, all well represented here. This is uh, uh, really outstanding. Um, a lot of those town names mean something to me because in between the uh, Department of Crime Control and Public Safety and coming to the court system uh, this past January, uh, most of that time in the middle was spent uh, as chairman of the State Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, a lot of those places have meaning in that world, uh, partly because the uh, alcohol regulatory system deals with a lot of your real problem outlets 
and uh, revoking licenses there. And I saw a number of revocations uh, in Hanover County of uh, Springs to mind, and, and uh, uh, Wilmington PD we did a lot down there to deal with regulatory issues. Yeah. So let me get into talking a little bit about technology uh, and law enforcement and where we are. Um, how many people have heard of the Discovery Automation System? Okay, about half have, have uh, worked with that in some capacity. Uh, it has been the case uh, under the U.S. Constitution that it's required that you give defendants exculpatory evidence prior to trial so that you don't have trial by ambush. The North Carolina General Assembly in the mid-2000s pushed that a step further by requiring that prosecutors have open file discovery for defense, uh, for defendants and their attorneys. So uh, that took it a step further. Now as a practical matter, at that point, many, many DAs in the state had open file discovery policies because there's so many thousands of cases filed every year. And most of them, uh, there's really very little in the file. It's you know, a law enforcement report, uh, a few things like that. Many district attorneys already had open file discovery policies, and if there was some question of protecting the identity of a witness um, or an ongoing investigation that might be compromised, they would just deal with that on a discretionary basis. The General Assembly stepped in and put that into law that every district attorney would have to have an open file for defendants. Well, that was a starting place. And they, they could come into court and ask for <coughs> but they had to, had to start at the position of everything being open. Well, those of you who were in law enforcement uh, uh, back then probably heard the, the uh, wails of misery from the DA's offices as they began to uh, break down copy machines, uh, churning out thousands and thousands of uh, pages of discovery every week, uh, and of course staff members standing there copying, 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 and then having to move all that paper through the system to um, all the defense attorneys to fulfill this new statutory requirement. So technology obviously could step in and play a role. So the Administrative Office of the Courts Technical Services Division got to work putting together this discovery automation system. And you can see just kind of the highlights here that uh, it's to provide electronic access to open discovery of all evidence in felony cases and track disclosure to the defense. Um, that required putting together some governance structures, some advisory committees um, uh, for that sort of thing. And it is now in use in all 44 prosecutorial districts in the state. It's pretty simple in concept. They established um, a, a site, a SharePoint uh, data site, and uh, law enforcement prosecutors upload information. Uh, the defense can download information from that site. Um, it's all in a secure interface. You can't tamper with the contents, but uh, it creates a, a point of exchange. Uh, you can also distribute that uh, data by burning it onto a CD. So you can deliver a CD instead of several box bowls of documents. Uh, now I'm a lawyer. Lawyers love words, but IT people love pictures because they actually need to understand stuff. So they diagram it out. Um, so it's pretty simple. Over uh, on the left hand side, you've got uh, preparing the electronic discovery at the law enforcement agency. You can upload that directly into the SharePoint site. Um, the uh, district attorney's office can do the same thing. They can upload and download things from that discovery site. And defense attorneys um, can download the information from that site. So that's, in pictures, just a very simple concept of how this thing works. Um, you start, there's an intake process, there's a redaction of sensitive uh, information that has to be protected, there's a Bates numbering process to help with the index function. Does anybody know what a Bates numbering process is? Yes, 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 we have winners out here. Um, many, many years ago, Bates is a company, you probably use their staple, staplers, right? Bates staplers? Well, they had a little thing that uh, uh, had numbers on it, a little mechanical device, and had ink at the top, and you go, skum -junk, and it puts a number on it, and when it reloads, it advances the number, one number. So you go to the next page, and you go, chunk chunk, and it puts the next number on it, chunk 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 chunk. And Bates finally figured out, hey, we're not in the mechanical uh, uh, printing uh, 
uh, stamping business. We're in the numbering business, so they learned how to do numbering on computers, and so that's still called a base numbering process. And then there's a the transmittal process uh, to move it around. Document intake, again, more pictures. You've got paper documents, uh, legal assistant uh, prepares the documents for scanning, scans them, sends them into a local server, so you have them now stored locally. Um, it can be then uploaded into the central document repository, and then law enforcement and others can access it. Uh, the redaction process, again, by pictures. Uh, now that you've got these things digitized, you can actually redact that part of the image, removing it forever. So unlike a paper redaction process where you're trying to either paste some, some kind of paper over the top to stop it from being copied or using a marker to try to uh, cover something for the copying, you can actually digitally erase that so there's you know, no question about being able to see the redacted information. Uh, and that moves uh, through the system for the final repository. The Bates numbering process we've talked a little bit about that helps in indexing. Uh, transmittal process, technical architecture, again, local servers, central servers. Uh, this would mean something to us if we were techies. <laughs> but let's get down to the benefits. And that's you know where I'd like to talk a little bit about technology. Technology does uh, really three big things for us. It can improve the quality of what we're doing and, and reduce the opportunity for error. Every time you have a system that requires repetitive entry of information, you have uh, the opportunity to miskey something, and then it can get lost in, in the big cloud of data. If you're dealing with physical documents, the risk of losing those documents, them going uh, uh, missing in the process of physically handling them, is a chance for error. So quality uh, is a big opportunity for technology to make a difference. You can key in something once, you store it once, it is now preserved in a single form and can be moved to many places and it will be identical in every place it's moved to. Efficiency is a second big opportunity for technology because now we can quickly move things around. Just think about those big boxes full of paper. Not only did they have to be scanned, copied, whatever, but then you physically had to move those things. Um, once you've digitized it, and you can email it or put boxes and boxes of things um, onto a CD, <coughs> now you can improve the efficiency. You can think about all kinds of technology where efficiency is improved. And finally, there are new capabilities that you can get um, out of technology. Sometimes it's things that are, that are truly new, and sometimes it's just making something that was practically impossible possible. One thing that I'll point out to there is that uh, this has the capability of uh, doing optical character recognition through uh, searchable PDF or, or whatever. Um, you can actually search for keywords in thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of documents by doing this. Now you could do that with physical pages, but you'll sit and have somebody working for hours and hours and hours going cross-eyed, looking at page after page after page, looking for some key word. Um, with searchable PDF, now you can have the computer look for those words on all those pages using some optical character uh, recognition software. Of course, that's the same kind of benefits you've got on the investigation side when you're looking at uh, document-intensive cases. You don't have to go and catalog and have somebody read every page. You can take all those digitized pages and then go look for patterns. Um, in words that come up uh, in your search uh, efforts. So quality, efficiency, and new capabilities uh, are big. Uh, again, you see some, some of the benefits listed here. Uh, again, number two, reducing physical handling, maintenance, and copying. That's reduction of errors and reduction of risk of loss. Uh, we talked under number four about search capability. Number five, data protection. Uh, I mean, you can store this information once you've digitized it in many places. And you can verify whether there has been any alteration. Because let's face it, if you do digitize something, uh, the technology is there to monkey with that digital image if you know what you're doing. But once it's stored in a central repository that's a secured access 
um, database, and you've got your own copy, and um, the defense attorney has a copy. There are multiple copies. If anybody tries to change any of it, now it's at variance with any other copy that's out there, and you can, you can quickly zero in on, on any variance there. So data protection is big. Um, and the last thing on this page, accelerating the delivery um, of the discovery <coughs> is uh, a huge thing. Other benefits, you can instantly provide those documents to multiple users for, via a central repository. Well, you know, that's, that's pretty clear. But think about the opportunities that that might provide for us in the future. I'm not sure that we've really uh, taken on board the opportunities this might give us for accelerating the disposition of matters in criminal court, for instance. Because if you could have multiple users in multiple locations who all have access to the same evidence, documentary evidence, that might be important for a particular hearing, a motions hearing, um, a review of whether something should be uh, redacted or released. You couple that with a little uh, video remote conferencing capability, you can have a, a, a hearing that would involve a judge in Wake County, you could have a defense attorney in Hendersonville, you could have a, uh, a prosecutor from the U.S. Attorney's Office in, in uh, you know, appearing out of Pitt County at the federal courthouse there. And instead of everybody driving to Wake County and scheduling that hearing in Wake County and everybody spending a day just to have a 15 minute hearing. You can have that hearing with everybody working together collaboratively uh, with that. Now, when it gets time for trial and you've got other kinds of issues, confrontation clause issues about having live testimony and giving the defendant the opportunity to cross examine witnesses, those are things we still um, uh, have as, as barriers probably to doing you know, totally video trials in the criminal uh, setting. But the technology like this gives us the opportunity to uh, use our time more efficiently and possibly accelerate the disposition of matters. And I think that's a real goal that we should set for ourselves, is accelerating the disposition of, of criminal matters. Uh, in fact, in some ways, we have a tremendous opportunity right now in our history while our court funding is not where it needs to be, for the last five years, our case filings in North Carolina have been dropping in almost every category, not every category. And that means that we're actually disposing of cases a little more than 100% per year. What I mean by that is we are disposing of more cases per year than new cases filed, something at like 103%. So that means we're actually catching up that backlog. And if we can drive that forward and continue to accelerate the disposition of easy to resolve matters where the evidence is clear, the legal positions are clear, you don't have to have a bunch of continuances uh, to get something before a judge and get it resolved. And technology can even allow us to do more in this regard by accelerating uh, the scheduling of hearings and the efficiency of everyone involved. So that's um, an exciting opportunity. So we've talked about that. We've talked about text searchable PDFs. <coughs> I won't walk you through the uh, next 20 pages of screenshots except to say this is what it looks like if you ever want to uh, work in this environment and log in. Uh, in all different categories in North Carolina, we accept about 3 million case filings a year, civil and criminal. And being able to move that kind of volume through technology like this is uh, a tremendous benefit uh, to everyone involved. So, that was pretty quick. Neil did schedule me for an hour. So you tell me. How are you using technology in your offices uh, that you haven't used in the last five years? Go ahead, move back. Um, with the crazy discovery laws that uh, North Carolina seems to be running rampant with, the uh, lab has uh, moved to all materials that fall under the discovery law 
in, in other words, everything that we create in the lab is immediately released to the DA's offices. And I know that there's been discussion of uh, FA Web and, and y'all system to, to talk. As of right now, I believe the DAs have to take our stuff and upload it. But um, everything that's generated in the laboratory down to the QC product, um, everything that, that we do in any case, all of our notes and everything is released in an electronic format as soon as that report is now um, finalized. So right. that is a way that we're helping to com DA's offices to, to comply with discovery laws. Great. I know I've talked with, uh, uh, by the way, this is not quite on that point, but talking with uh, Ben David down in Hanover County, I know that he has insisted uh, that all law enforcement transmit their evidence, their documentary evidence, electronically into his office and stop bringing uh, big envelopes and boxes uh, by. Uh, how's that going, you folks in Hanover? Yeah. They're still, they're still doing paper because sometimes this system is a great system, but sometimes it goes into nowhere land, and nobody seems to know where it's at. I agree with that. <laughs> so we're, we're um, actually losing uh, files? Yes. Scanning it. And I don't know if it, who, what end mm -hmm. it's on, but sometimes I still have to pull the file and scan everything from the file yeah. back to the DA's office. And the detective will have confirmation that it did go through, but the DA's office said they never received it. And nobody can find it and on the database it, either. Right. And we have a new, we have a, we have an issue with in-car camera videos. Mm -hmm. uh, turning them over to the DA's office to BM, and actually I went and met with BM a couple, a month ago or so, about getting those so that they could watch them over there at the DA's office without having our technology. Uh, is there a way that we could upload video, like L3 videos in, onto that site so that we could send it to them? I don't know, but that's something that we'll need to be looking at for an enhancement. Um, video, uh, and to a lesser extent, audio eats up a lot of data real quickly, video particularly, so I'm, I'm not sure what storage the capacity issues are or the compatibility issues with the video format that you're using, but I'm not a, I'm not a tech. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I appreciate knowing about that. I can ask about that. <laughs> I just wondered um, if you know numbers on law enforcement agencies using the system or just bringing over boxes and, you know, having, what I've seen is the, the district attorney's offices are scanning in the documents. Are law enforcement agencies scanning them in? They can. They can. Um, is Wake County uh, and Raleigh PD, are you doing that? Having law enforcement um, upload directly? Right now, we're just paper. Just doing paper. With, our, with, our, with CCBI's in the discovery to the DA's mm -hmm. office, except okay. for our reports. And they're doing the uploading. Okay. Anybody else um, who's actually uploading directly into desks? Crystal Bush Grand is. I've got one installed somewhere. We have our own electronic scanning system so they can move it from that and then move it into your system. Because you've got your own local server that you're putting it on first. Yeah. Okay. And back. I was just going to say we <coughs> we've started doing it, but we've had trouble with the audio and the videos. Uh, part of it, but we started trying to, to cause we started putting our own disc initially, and then this came about, and then we started doing it that way. Okay. I don't think our investigation department is using that, but if they want to, they because the sign on screen looks like the NC Aware sign on screen. But how do you begin using that? Since I came in uh, January, I've been worrying about searching for a new chief information officer because our chief information officer is retiring and uh, dealing with the legislature <coughs> this year. So uh, I can't answer that question. And we actually have the DA's office come and roll it out to somebody from there. So maybe start with a conversation. Because right now, I know when they have a felony, they do a felony report and they're still using the debate stamp. I mean, so I think the they're still doing that's what we do. To change Yes. Well, over in Hayward County, we haven't heard of this system. 
<laughs> that's because life and life are so good. <laughs> okay, step one, get a base stamp. <laughs> you should be able to find a surplus one somewhere. Uh, well, I'm sure if you, if you ask uh, the DA's office or uh, uh, maybe talk to the clerk of the court there about this, that would be able to start a conversation about this. Most of our agents now have copiers that are also scanners. Are you feeling the, the, the pressure of the weight of documents, or is this current system working okay? Um, is that with maybe a lot of why? Documents, especially the uh, fraud cases, where you send in a court order for read that record, the Facebook records, and whatnot. But all of those are uh, given to us electronically. If you were to print it out, you'd have a case file easily three, four inches thick. So a lot of our documents we are uh, submitting electronically, um, but we still do have large paper case files we have to provide as well. Okay. Because, I mean, I, I'm one of these people who, while I can see where you can use technology for a lot of things, it doesn't always make sense. So if you're not drowning in paper, maybe that's why um, folks have not sort of sought out uh, this ability quite yet. But, uh, but I expect you to other comments about uh, using technology like this, document management? Technology. I just have another question. Sure. Do you know what um, the district attorney's offices are doing? Are they doing backlog old cases? Are they putting uploading those, or are they kind not, of doing current? Not that I've heard. I think it's all just current current volume, uh, current caseloads. So not creating an archive, uh, pre des uh, repository. Well, what would you like to see technology do? What, what can the, uh, and, and how can the courts help? Because what's becoming increasingly true is we have to collaborate a lot more. It's our job to receive evidence in the process and for judges to make decisions. And we also have the role under the Constitution of supporting the district attorney's offices administratively. So this really began as a service district attorney. But um, I understand you spoke some yesterday about the role of the clerks in preserving evidence, for instance. Um, and they face a, a lot of the same issues that you face in holding and preserving evidence. Uh, I know we would like to see um, the, the clerk of courts be more involved. Like we've actually tried to tell our to come to this uh, mm -hmm. type of training um, because we know that it is, they do have an important role in preserving evidence mm -hmm. um, that they support. Um, and I think we just had a recent change, so we're planning on having a meeting with a current person who's over there in charge of that. But um, coming up with a, a better system because it, there's some miscommunication sometimes, and anything that they can do to help um, facilitate the disposition at the end of the court case um, would certainly benefit them and benefit us in the long run. Um, maybe even have an electronic system for um, tracking the evidence when it goes over to the, the courthouse. We, just have, we have a new courthouse now, mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if anything has changed, but I know that's something that we're, uh, we're working on. Yeah, when the, clerk, when the clerk receives that information because it's been offered in trial and admitted, they are the custodian, mm -hmm. and without a court order, they can't dispose of it. Right. Um, and yet, Many of these clerks have such tremendous volume that they practically need to run evidence rooms themselves. Um, now, in a smaller courthouse, that's not as true. It, it struck me in the case down in uh, Goldsboro. I used to practice law in Goldsboro. Um, I can't think of the Dwayne Dale. What's that? Dwayne Dale. Mm -hmm. Was it the Dwayne Dale case where they finally found evidence in a room closet at the police department? No. Um, I mean that you know that was a stroke of luck after 20 years that there was evidence available, but the fact that it was unrecognized uh, for what it was, uh, and no one had any idea that, that they even had custody of it, uh, 
is really less than the standard we need to aspire to. We need to, we need, I'll just put it that way. We, we, we need to do better, and we are doing better. We're, we're a big and growing state in a more complicated world. So we have to have better systems in place for this. Yes? We had, um, our New Hanover County clerks had said that they were going to get rid of a lot of the evidence that's in their evidence storage room after the appeal process is over. Mm -hmm. Well, we wanted to go and pick that property up and bring it back because we need to keep it until they get out of jail, mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, we have the order to pick it up, but then there was a um, misunderstanding about firearms, and then they said they couldn't release the firearms back to us. Do you? I don't know how long ago was that. In July. It was in July. I I don't know if that was tied up in the new firearms legislation this year about. The, um, yeah, but the we're not disposing custody. of them. We're going to we're right. bringing them back to the, to the station to hold them until the person is released from jail or is out. Right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with a, a firearms issue in, in that if you do have a, a court order, except that um, there are specific judicial findings that may need to be made because there are firearms involved. We have orders from our ADAs to retain, for the clerk's office to retain it, and then she also wrote an order for me to allow me to go pick it up. Mm -hmm. But there was an issue with the farm in the case, in one of the cases. So we just we haven't picked up anything until we get that resolved. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm sure our legal <coughs> uh, office will be happy to work with uh, Ann Kennedy on um, identifying any issues that may need to be resolved and pick that up. Because I'm sure that they don't want to be holding that evidence oh, no, yeah. a day longer than they need to. But they just there, there must be some assurance that they feel like they need to document. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't know if you knew why. No, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that New Hanover County issue about uh, firearms being held uh, as part of the case that's on appeal. Yes? I was just a follow-up comment, kind of the things that have been said about the clerk's offices. I do um, think that there would be a whole lot of value in having um, the clerk's offices here or in some dialogue with the evidence custodians from law enforcement agencies throughout the state. Um, because we see time and time again, I know AOC legal has a policy, you know, that says they'll return it at the end of the appeals process, but that's not happening. Um, clearly New Hanover has decided to, you know, maybe do that. Um, but I think without those interests intersecting and talking together, we're kind of missing a lot, a whole segment of where this evidence is. And um, I think that that might be important going forward is trying to really get them here or in a room with um, law enforcement that's doing the same stuff. Um, for the benefit of posterity of the video, the suggestion was um, how, how can we better work with clerk's court in elevating this issue um, <coughs> uh, to improve those processes. And I will maybe make a suggestion to my friend Colonel Woodcock back there <laughs> that uh, the association, this association, reach out to the conference of clerks of the Superior Court and offer to come to one of their training sessions and have a session on evidence and um, make sure that they understand that this resource is available, that this resource is working on standardizing and professionalizing uh, North Carolina standards of evidence uh, preservation and that you know, that resource is, is a wide open door for clerks of court. Um, and can create a forum for those discussions. Uh, clerks are all constitutional, independently elected officials, and uh, they can set the standards in their own courthouses because they are constitutional, independently elected officials. One thing that's really remarkable is that the clerks of court are very cooperative with one another in standardizing policies and procedures for how to run clerk's offices. So while their uh, uh, rule books uh, their policies and procedures uh, are standardized, they're all voluntary. They voluntarily come together to agree on standard practices. Um, so getting into that kind of uh, river of discussion
can yield a lot of results in terms of standardizing practices for evidence uh, preservation uh, and release. Other comments? Yes, sir. I'll just go make one more comment. As far as the individual clerk's office will go, and since AOC does so much with their technology, um, maybe AOC would design an evidence tracking type module within the court record to where the clerks can enter what evidence has been stored in their uh, storeroom. Uh, if I have to actually go and pull the file out of the file drawer and say, okay, we took this, this, and this, and the evidence and should still be here. And then they have a record yeah. of it that maybe eventually law enforcement will get access just like the court record system. And then we know what they're saying they have and what we have. Good and idea. people like yeah. that. Can uh, for, the, for the video, the <laughs> suggestion was uh, AOC's uh, technology work with folks support to create a standardized way of putting an inventory of evidence into every case file uh, that can show what, what was received, what's being held, how it's been um, either stored or released, uh, and standardize that format in the technology so it's easily accessible to everyone. Um, big, big issues that we have to look forward to in uh, courts um, really uh, revolve around paperless court. How can we have paperless court in North Carolina? Um, when I first came in in January, I thought it was going to be a big question. You know, where where should we be headed in terms of our technology? What are the opportunities? And it didn't take long to realize that that decision has already been made. Paperless court is the standard toward which the country is is moving. Not that it will be totally paperless but that uh, things like e-citation, um, you know, we have to push this farther. The fact that a trooper can write a citation or one of your officers writes a citation on the side of the road and it wirelessly is transmitted to the courthouse instantaneously. And then at the courthouse, we print it, fold it, <laughs> put it in a shelf, <laughs> put it in a bin, put it in a shopping cart, push it to the courtroom. <laughs> And you know what we do with it when its lifespan is over and all the work is finished? We digitize it. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's there's a big missing piece here in the middle, and uh, we've got to solve that. And the uh, uh, the path that North Carolina carved out for itself, uh, as I read it, is 10, 12 years ago, when there was nothing out in the world to buy, um, we set on this course to build things. We have our own software development team, and they've been designing lots of products like this to address specific needs. Um, a lot of that progress uh, slowed down a lot with budget cuts in the last five years. Meanwhile, the vendor community has stepped up, and now they're offering products that have electronic document management systems integrated with uh, the case management system, integrated with uh, complete general ledger financial management system, which is huge for courts. Um, and we're not building those things yet. So we're going to have to do a real deep soul search in this upcoming uh, year about whether we're still on the right path or whether we've fallen behind in, to an extent that our build-it-yourself strategy doesn't make sense. Because you can now buy things that integrate a lot of these functions including this uh, sort of document management thing, which gets a little bit at what you're talking about with an evidence inventory. Because you would actually take all these things and attach them to the case file so that when you walk in the courtroom, the DA is pulling up a, a case file on a tablet, and he's got all the PDFs of all the documentary evidence. The clerk's got the same thing on her desk. The judge's got the same thing on uh, his or her desk. The uh, defense attorney has their own device in the courtroom, and they can look at those same things. Um, or even a pro se litigant can figure out a way to log in uh, on Wi-Fi and see the same case file, instead of pushing shopping carts of uh, traffic tickets around and going down the hallways. Uh, that technology is available. Uh, now, because we're a unified court system, our scale is a lot bigger than where these systems have been bought in states where each county pays for its own uh, court system. Uh, Florida, for instance, their Supreme Court um, has mandated paperless courthouses uh, across the state. 
but because they're a completely federated court system, that means every county is picking different technology. So those of you who've been in the interoperability world, uh, worrying about interoperability in, in uh, law enforcement, they don't have interoperable courthouses. You, you can't check your criminal record in, in one county or a case file and have the same technology to look at the next county over. Because uh, each county clerk is choosing different technologies. But um, we will have one technology for North Carolina, and that's our next week call. Other technology comments for administration of justice? Things that you're doing, things that you're frustrated with. That's a big invitation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Are we going to get rid of the DOS type interface on the uh, <laughs> AOC website? I mean, Amen. Uh, Amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, uh, uh, it's a COBOL based program, it's oh. IBM, IMS wow. database, it's a hierarchical database which means that it's basically an index card. Oh, yeah. Everybody remembers the card index at, at the library? <laughs> That's what our major court data system is, is a giant card index file. So everything's indexed by whatever's on the top line. It's not a relational database, but you can then search all the different subcategories under each one. Um, it's incredibly efficient from a, um, a technology standpoint. It doesn't use a lot of power. It doesn't crash. It's pretty bulletproof. <laughs> but it's not very versatile. Um, when you build into um, mm -hmm. something like a SQL database, Microsoft SQL relational database, which is what a lot of the commercial um, case management software is sitting on, crashes a lot. It does a lot more. Banks, insurance companies, they are still relying on the same technology that our system is based on, COBOL language and um, IMS underlying database because it's so efficient and so stable. But it doesn't give us the functionality that I think we need to do our jobs better. It's going to be a massive investment. Um, let me just give you this example, Oregon. Now, Oregon started five, six years ago way behind where we are today. They didn't have e-citation. They didn't have um, a case management systems like, uh, even you know, like an automation system like this. Um, and they were working on the same kind of old IMS database uh, platform that we are. They got together with their legislature. There was a lot of uh, gnashing of teeth and wrangling about how they could move forward. And they made a commitment to finance the replacement of their old systems. All of them, state of the art. Price tag is ninety million dollars. Our total budget for the court system in North Carolina is four hundred fifty million dollars, and the total amount that we spend on all kinds of technology—telephones, you know, video conferencing, computers, all the PCs, the field personnel who go out and fix things, everything all in—we spent about fifty million dollars last year just keep every, keeping everything running and making these incremental improvements. They're spending $90 million over and above what it would cost to run their court system in order to replace their technology. And they're one third the size of North Carolina. Now that's not to say it would cost us three times more because a lot of that, the, the engine, doesn't have to be much bigger here, um, but there'll be more sites to install it in. But just to give you the, the, the price tag, they're spending 90 million. Kentucky is just going to replace their database. Um, they made an announcement about that, just replacing their database. Uh, 28 million. Their legislature just approved funding for that. Do you know anything about the e-citation program? Uh, not on the tech side, no. I just know what they do. And know that they've been around a long time because I was in crime control when it was being rolled out with Iowa Patrol. Yeah, we were just having an issue with the uh, bathing on the location. Like when we, it transfers in from the car, from CAD, into mm -hmm. the e-citation, it doesn't map the location block. So we mm -hmm. have to, records has to go in there and uh, put the block in so it will geo-verify. We've been, I've, we, I've called AOC a couple of times about it. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't know if we're just we were not trained properly on it because I think that they sent one person to a training <coughs> and that they were supposed to come back and train everyone, mm -hmm. and that some, most of the time does not work. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's a. Uh, I, I really I can't speak to what the what the cause is, but I, I can tell you when I was saying a little while ago that um, over the last five years we've fallen behind. We didn't have any dedicated funding from the General Assembly for technology in our line items. Obviously, we spent a lot of money on technology, we got a lot of grants, and started things. But we didn't have any dedicated funding until 2005. And then they actually designated a big chunk of our money for technology. Over the next three years, that money increased dramatically. With the last few rounds of budget cuts, this year we will be back to 2006 levels for our funding. So uh, those funding issues are the, are the ones that I worry about the most and, and getting new leadership in place uh, with our CI retiring at the end of this month. Um, but if we're entering into what I consider to be the next generation for technology that we have to plan for. Is, it, is AOC working on any kind of program similar to that for the clerks, like for their file, the clerk's files and things like that? Is there anything out there that they're working on? The, the case management system is called CCIS, and that's to replace the old ACES system, which is the green screen application. Um, but in terms of document management, no, we're, we're only scratching the surface in electronic document management. That's why I was talking about how the vendor community over the last five years has come in, taken the things that we were leading on, enhanced those, and incorporated and integrated other functionalities um, that we're really not very far on electronic uh, document management, financial integration being prime in, in my book, plus e-filing uh, on the civil side because clerks of courts spend a big part of every day taking in new documents, stamping it, creating files. Um, once we get to e-filing and have the electronic record be the record instead of the paper record be the record, that would be a tremendous cost savings, a labor savings for everyone involved. And we'll save a bunch of trees. Um, Iowa is moving forward with an aggressive e-filing and paperless court project, but they don't have any trees to start with. Um, you know, we got plenty of trees and plenty of paper, but we still need to do better. I'm sorry to answer your question. I'm sure that it's kind of seemed like it's a why is it such a problem on getting a case when it's over with the disposition at that time and not wait two or three months and have to send the paperwork back to the DA's office to get you for that? You're way past my level of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, she was asking, you know, why does it take so long to actually dis uh, complete the disposition of a case after the, the trial to uh, get information back? Uh, did you say to the district attorney or to the law enforcement agency? To the district attorney, uh, we have to send papers back, bring it back up in court, get an order, when it be taken care of at the time of the trial. Well, that would be the appeals process. Well, not if it's done over with. Uh, of course, you can't just work for 10 days. You know, you'd have to wait that long, but you have to send an order at that time, and you know, you know what you got to do later. Well, you know, again, as I look at this coming in um, just recently, there are lots of process improvements that can be made. Uh, justice systems are massive systems of information flow, and there are lots of opportunities to improve the efficiency of that. And analyzing work processes, um, and not even for technology, just analyzing work processes to simplify them um, is something we need to do much better. Their big meetings are spring and fall. Um, uh, well, I guess they just had a big meeting in August, and then the next one will be like in March, I think. Um, so late summer, spring. So, yeah, I, I certainly will uh, speak with their executive director and, uh, and their president about our conversation here today and uh, let them know that that this is a tremendous opportunity for everybody to get on the same page sooner rather than, than later and uh, in an easier way rather than a more difficult way. And um, just in closing, let me say again, 
how much I believe in the association. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. I think you're doing very important work for the state of North Carolina and really setting the pace for law enforcement throughout the state. Uh, and the East Coast and the Eastern U.S. too. So uh, congratulations, and I hope you continue to have a good conference. Uh, Dean? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Well, we also fix a couple of things. And our fire, I don't know, if someone near the airport, I think. And you want the whole warehouse, we want to area, you can't see the whole They're back to the to go we've tried to simplify it. it used to be three separate websites that you have to log on to now it's all one website you get to pick the three tabs at the top everyone has their own user id um, you have an fa administrator in your agency those one or two people would be the ones coming to the training we would train the trainers they would go back to the agency they would put everybody online and when you are online with fa web as a law enforcement agency when we release that report, when the when the signature is applied and the analyst is done and they hit finalize release, you immediately get a copy of that packet. When I say packet, we call it discovery packet because it has everything, including the kitchen sink, set with it. Now the DA's offices uh, then comply with discovery with that packet. Law enforcement agencies do not care what C reagents we use. And we have now made it available so that the law enforcement agencies can just receive what they want to see, i.e. the report with the chain of custody and the uh, SPFI or the pre-law receipt. Um, you, it, it is editable. You have that function to decide as an agency what comes to you when you receive that packet. So again, all these upgrades have been uh, very exciting. Um, have been requested and asked for since we initially put FA on. We finally got that upgraded mid-June. With that said, as you know, with any type of new software, there are kinks. So we, uh, we are just now getting to the point that we believe it's ready to uh, release to the rest of the world. So if you are interested in getting on FA Web, uh, being a pre-log agency, so that when you bring your stuff to the lab, whether it's the Western, CJ's not excited about that, or the Triad Lab, or the Raleigh Lab, you come with a piece of paper and a barcode, you will have entered everything that went on the, the old, I'm sorry, it's not an SPFI, 20 years of saying SPFI is going to be on the request for physical examination form. Um, you actually have downloaded it into the system, and it sends it to a little bubble. I scan that barcode, that bubble downloads into our system, and everything that you typed is now typed in my system. There, that transposing errors, um, things like that, or not being able to, to read the handwritten notes, everything is right there, immediately downloaded. And from that, you're going to hand me that evidence. I'm going to sign, check the evidence, make sure it matches. Boom, it's in. Just like that. You're not waiting for that input of data that the evidence techs are having to do right now. So we're excited um, that the pre-log agencies here know how much quicker that makes an intake and uh, receipt again of the system when, when we get ready to give you back your evidence. Scanning that barcode, you sign a little uh, uh, credit 
Yards, Signature Bed, and Blue Wing Shores again. So um, we're excited about those upgrades and ready to start getting people online. If you want to be on that system, email me. Uh, my email is sbarker at ncdoj.gov, you know, like everybody else, at ncdoj.gov. Um, I will put you on the list. I know I have a, a handful of you already on that list. Um, if you're not, you're like, don't forget to catch your Durham was our baby site. Uh, they've been on forever compared to everybody else. Um, so uh, we appreciate y'all's efforts to keep that FA uh, where, where it got to. Um, the other thing is the new part of the district attorney's options in the FA web. They have only been able to receive. Um, we've opened the gateway for them to send directly into our system. They have three options. They can send us a rush request. They can send us a stop work request. And they can send us information about the court that they need somebody uh, to, to respond to court, or they are being released from court. So those are nice ways to come back into our system. The same analysis is on standby. They can say they've been released from their uh, <coughs> subpoena. <coughs> the rush and stop work that are coming through the systems, that's going directly to an analyst that's been assigned that case, or if it's not been assigned, it's going to the supervisor, so the supervisor's making a decision on the rush. The stop work is coming again straight to the supervisor, or if an analyst has a man that's been adjudicated, they know that they can stop working. Mm -hmm. That's working well for us, but there's still a lot of people not using that system. And we're still getting that disposition mailed to us from, uh, faxed to us from the DAs. One second, change tape. Sure. <laughs>